Welcome back to the OpenStreetMap series of tutorials. We're focusing on mountain bike trails and this is the first episode. We're going to get you set up and we'll work out what trails you need to map. If you missed the introductory video on OpenStreetMap, I've put a link up top. The good news is, for most of this first part, you'll be out riding your bike gathering data. But first, let's go through a list of what you need. 1. A GPS-enabled bike computer, or a smartwatch, or a phone to record your rides. 2. An actual computer or laptop for entering all the information afterwards. 3. A free account with Strava or RunKeeper or Garmin Connect or any other fitness app that has an export GPX function. Whichever app you use, make sure the export GPS feature isn't hidden behind a paywall unless of course you have a paid account. When I checked yesterday, Strava, Garmin and RunKeeper, all their free accounts allow you to export GPX. You can't use GPX files from trail forks because they have a clause during download that makes it illegal to use their traces and they strip out vital data to make them unusable and you need a premium account anyway. 4. GPX files for the trails you want to enter. More on that shortly. Now let's work out what trails you need to map. On your PC or phone, open your preferred app and zoom into the map of your bike park. The OpenStreetMap data layer is a different colour in each app. In Strava it's a green dotted line, in Garmin Connect it's a grey continuous line, and in RunKeeper it's a thick yellow line. They should also have the trail names beside each line. If you can't see any, try zooming in, or, as we'll cover in the last tutorial, it could be the case that no trails have yet been entered. Whatever the situation, work out which trails are missing and make a list. You're about to go out on your bike and record them. It's definitely worth noting at this point that you may already have all the information you need. If you've already ridden the trails you want to map, and those rides were recorded on your app, you can just go back through your history, look at that particular ride, and click the Export GPX or Download GPX link. I just want to talk about GPX files for a moment. Pretty soon you're going to download some GPX files from your cycling app, then upload them to OpenStreetMap, which extracts the GPS data from those files. This collection of data is called a GPS trace, and over the next few tutorials you'll hear me refer to that a lot. The data in those GPS traces includes thousands of points, each ping of your bike every second or two, to a satellite during your ride. Each of those pings is transmitted from a moving bike bouncing along a trail half concealed from the sky beneath a tree canopy. With all of that in mind, don't expect your GPS data to be absolutely accurate. In reality, it could be out by 5 or 10 metres in places, especially if you use a smartphone, which might only ping every 5 seconds. Smart watches are a little bit better, but not much. Handlebar-mounted bike computers are the most accurate, especially high-end Garmin or the new V2 series Wahoo, which transmit to multiple satellites at the same time. All the above is why different GPX files never line up with each other. You should consider GPS trace as a guide, nothing more. So, when we start drawing the trails in OSM, if the satellite image of the trail is visible but the GPS doesn't line up, go with the aerial map. With all that said, also bear in mind that your satellite image might be a few years old. If your trail has only just been built, or if it's hidden beneath a canopy of trees, it won't be visible on an aerial map. That's when you trust the GPS. It's all you've got, and that's fine. In a couple of years, as satellite images are updated, your new trail might become visible, and then you can edit the trail to make it more accurate. We'll cover all that in the next tutorial, adding a trail, and the one after that, editing a trail. Righto, now for the fun part. Go for a ride on the trails you want to map and record them. Don't panic if you don't get them all done in one day. You can always go back another time. Let's just get the job started. 
On your PC or laptop, log into your app and open the ride. Export the GPX file or files that you want to save. Then go to openstreetmap.org. Sign up. In the top menu, click on GPS traces. On the next page, click the Upload a Trace button and upload the GPX file you just saved from your ride. Give it a logical description that will make sense if you look at it in a few years' time. OpenStreetMap hangs on to a copy of your GPS traces. When you upload the file, choose Identifiable, as this stores the most detailed data from the ride and also allows other people to use it. The system can take a few minutes to process your upload, depending on the length of your ride and subsequent size of the file. You can click the Refresh button in your browser to check, or just wait for the confirmation email that it sends you. Once the upload is confirmed, it will appear in the My Traces tab on the GPS Traces page. Now, make a coffee, strap in, move on to the next tutorial, adding a trail. Thanks for your company. Here's a few more videos you might enjoy. If you enjoyed that one, uh, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Righto, see you out on the trails next time. Bye.